Well, good morning. Let's read the scriptures together. And we read from Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you that are enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their master, or the eyes of, the, of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God, until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of the ar scorn of the arrogant and the contempt of the proud. We look to the Lord to be our deliverer. Psalm 124, 124, if the Lord had himself had not been on our side, now we may Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when the enemies rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive, and when their anger burned against us, then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrents gone over our soul, over our soul would have swept the raging waters. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth, our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are delivered. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. And Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. As the hills stand about Jerusalem, so the Lord stands round about his people from this time forth forevermore. The sceptre of wickedness shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous turn their hands to evil. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are true of heart. Those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord shall take away with the evildoers. But let there be peace upon Israel. And Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then were our lips filled with laughter and our tongue with songs of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. For the Lord has indeed done great things for us and therefore we rejoiced. Restore again our fortunes, O Lord, as the riverbeds of the desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed, will come back with shouts of joy, bearing their sheaves with them. The Lord is our helper, and the Lord is our deliverer. In all good times and bad times, the Lord is with us. Job chapter 1 There once was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys and very many servants. So that this man was the greatest of all people of the East. His sons used to go up and hold feasts in one another's houses in turn. They would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the feast days had run their course, Job would send and sanctify them. And he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This is what Job always did. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, Why, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not put a fence around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, all that he has is in your power, only do not stretch out your hand against him. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. One day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, 
The oxen were plowing, and the donkeys were feeding beside them. And the submarines came and fell on them and carried them off, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants of cons and consumed them. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, The Chaldeans formed three columns and made a raid on the camels and carried them off and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, when suddenly a great wind came across the desert, struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead. I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his clothes, shaved his head, and fell on the ground and worshipped. He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrongdoing. We start the account of Job, a man who had everything and then had it all taken away, but still worshipped the Lord. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 17. Paul a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel concerning his son who descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed throughout the world. For God whom I serve with my spirit by announcing the gospel of his Son, is my witness, that without ceasing I remember you always in my prayers, asking that by God's will I will somehow at last succeed in coming to you. For I am longing to see you, so that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, or rather, so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that I have often intended to come to you, but this thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you, as I have among the rest of the Gentiles. I am a debtor to Greeks and to barbarians, to the wise and to the foolish, hence my eagerness to proclaim the gospel to you also, who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith, as it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. Not ashamed of the gospel. We proclaim it boldly, for it's God's power to change the world. Let's be bold in our proclamation today. I am not ashamed of the gospel. And so, Lord, we lift up to you this day and we pray your blessing upon it and upon all that we do. Lord, use us for your glory. Lord, empower us. And Lord, make us fitting witnesses for you. Lord, we pray for the people of London and the people of our land. Lord, we pray for the election of this time. And also we pray, Lord, for uh, the uh, fear of terrorism and the actuality of terrorism. And Lord, we pray that you will deliver us from both. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>